Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in today's video using Space Engine we're actually going to explore a system that you may or may not be familiar with depending on whether you know this game. And of course I'm talking about Kerbal Space Program. That's right, this is a mod that introduces Kerbal Space System into Space Engine. If you haven't subscribed yet, click that subscribe button right now because there's so many more videos coming in the future that will teach you something using video games. Welcome to What The Math. <laughs> And so welcome to Kerbal Space Program mod for um, for Space Engine. This is version 0.9.8.0. And basically here you can actually go to every single one of the Kerbal's planets, which are available right here. Now, as you can see, their values are very, very, very small in comparison to other planets in uh, Space Engine. But this is because they, uh, whoever made this mod tried to re recreate... Um, the actual Kerbal system. So it's essentially uh, in terms of Kerbal size, which is much, much, much smaller than a real life size. Now here, uh, the farthest planet um, is actually not here for some reason. I think the farthest planet here for some reason is Jewel. Let's go check it out. Um, and Jewel is at a distance of just over, I think it's about five astronomical units. Oh no, it's even closer actually. But anyway, so here is Jewel, and um, this is essentially what it looks like in Space Engine. Very, very, very beautiful. We're going to actually make it spin a little bit. And you can even go inside the atmosphere just to kind of check it out, because it is technically a gas giant. The only problem, of course, about um, this particular version of Jewel is that um, it is based on the textures from Kerbal Space Program, which don't really work as well in Space Engine. So here, I can kind of actually land on Jewel. Uh, and there is no clouds, there's no atmosphere. So it's, it is a little bit more primitive than uh, an actual gas giant from, from our solar system, but nevertheless, it is pretty cool. We also, of course, have a lathe that's um, a code Oceania that actually has an ocean and uh, you can also land here as well, and you can even explore one of these islands, if you so please. But unfortunately here, once again, the actual texturing is a bit problematic, but um, you can still kind of look into, you know, into open space and um, see things that you wouldn't see in uh, Kerbal Space Program, like for example, all of these nebula in the distance, um, and all of these beautiful locations, and including, of course, somewhere out there, our planet Earth, which is apparently on the other side. It's right over there at a distance of about 82 light years away from um, from Kerbal system, which is essentially where it's located in this particular mod. And let's actually wait for the jewel rise. I, I would like to actually see what jewel rise looks like on the lathe. Um, and you can kind of see there is an object right there, which is one of the moons of Jewel known as Bob. We're going to go visit it in a second as well. But here comes the sunrise, or I guess Kerbal rise, and uh, somewhere out there is beautiful Jewel that we're about to see as soon as it comes up from the horizon. Now there's one thing I've totally forgot, and that thing of course is that, um, oh look at this beautiful passage of the shadow there, I don't really know which moon this was. Um, that thing I forgot is that uh, Leith is actually tightly locked to Jewel, meaning that I was standing on the side that never sees Jewel. I actually have to stand right here, and now we'll be always able to see Jewel, which is absolutely gorgeous here. Anyway, so that's Leith and Jewel, let's quickly check out some of the other moons and take a look at them as well, because um, everything in Space Engine is absolutely gorgeous. And the next on the list is Val, and this is actually uh, another moon of Jewel, and it looks almost exactly like it does in Kerbal Space Program. So let's take a look at this, let's actually move a little bit closer to it, and possibly even land on it as well, but hopefully on the bright side where we can actually see a little bit of texturing. So. So if you land here, you'll notice that the textures are kind of smudged. That is because it's actually using the texture boxes from Kerbal Space Program, uh, which unfortunately don't really get processed as well as they do in, um, in Kerbal Space. Uh, but nevertheless, very, very beautiful and very magnificent looking uh, object. Moon of Jewel. Tylo is um, yet another one. We're going to go there in a second. And this is the one that's super, super hard to land on, super hard to escape from because it does have very high gravity and is, of course, uh, one of the objects, one of the very large objects that doesn't actually have any atmosphere on it. 
So here, you actually have to be very careful when um, trying to plan a mission to Tylo. And Tylo is an object that's about 12,000 kilometers in diameter. And let's actually fly through or fly just above its surface just so you can see how bright and how unusually interesting it is from um, from this distance. And I think we just had some sort of eclipse, possibly from Joule. I think this is what just happened because I don't really know what else would be big enough to create this. So we've just witnessed a Joule eclipse, which I think is from... Where is Joule anyway? Is it somewhere over here? It must be somewhere over here because that's... Yeah, there it is. That was definitely a Jewel Eclipse. Probably a relatively rare event, actually, so I think we just got lucky. Now, we haven't actually looked at all of the new moons here, because there's also Bob and Paul, um, and both of these are relatively small. They're not as exciting as the three, one, uh, three objects I just took a look at, but you can obviously take a look at them yourself when you decide to install this particular mod, and this is essentially Lathe and Jewel um, in, in motion. And there is something else moving, and I think that's possibly Bob. That, that was a tiny object that doesn't actually show as well. All right, so let's actually go and take a look at other um, planets here. Starting with Elu, which uh, is technically the farthest object away from, um, from Kerbal. Uh, but in this particular simulation, I think it might be a little bit closer in terms of a distance, because here the semi-major axis is only 4.15 astronomical units, whereas for Jew, it's 4.55. Uh, but in terms of the actual look, though, this is actually as realistic as it gets, at least uh, compared to real, um, real ELO in Kerbal Space Program. But once again, as you can see, the textures don't actually look as realistic, mostly because um, th in this particular case, it doesn't actually create um, procedural generated textures like Space Engine usually does for some of the other objects. So here, the textures are based on the texture box which is very, very low resolution. So don't expect this to be a very beautiful sort of looking object once you land on it. Now let's of course take a look at Duna as well, because Duna is essentially an equivalent of Mars in our solar system. And uh, it is probably the object or one of the first objects that most people decide to travel to uh, before they go to other planets. Because this object here is, uh, well, not only is it beautiful, um, it is probably one of the easier objects to land on, because EVE is challenging. It destroys things, but um, here you don't really need to bring um, heat shields or anything. You can usually just use atmospheric pressure to kind of slow down and try to land using parachutes. And uh, I kind of, I really like the reflection here, which is something I think Kerbal Space Program could use. Uh, but unfortunately, once again, there's no clouds and at atmosphere is kind of invisible, which is a little bit unfortunate. Hopefully, whoever uh, made this mod will introduce atmospheric pressure and, and uh, visual atmospheric effects later on. Next on the list is Dress, and Dress um, is an object that's not as popular as some of the other planets, but it is nevertheless a pretty interesting object to, uh, object to visit, because it basically is a very large rock with no atmosphere, and it's not as easy to land on as it is on, uh, on Duna, of course, but it is close enough to Kerbin where you can actually kind of go and explore um, and possibly even bring some rocks back. And now we're going to go to our home planet of Kerbin. Let's go check out Kerbin, see what it looks like, and check out uh, the location for Kerbal Space Center as well. And here comes Kerbin and its two moons. And look at this beauty, such a gorgeous looking planet. Including, look at that, we actually have night lights. There's city lights. And also a little bit of atmospheric effects here. There's definitely clouds. There's definitely some sort of um, hurricane-like effects. Uh, very beautiful reflection and so on and so forth. And this right here is that infamous creator that you get to see in Kerbal Space Center if you zoom out from uh, from Kerbin. Now, I don't actually think there's any structures in here. As a matter of fact, there's possibly nothing. It does say that this has multicellular marine and terrestrial life. And let's actually try to see what the actual surface uh, textures look like. We're going to slowly approach this mountain range right here, which I think is actually close to where Kerbal Space Center is. Uh, but we're, we just want to—I want to see if there's actually anything on the surface, which I kind of doubt because I think this is still using the same texture box like every other object in here. And here we go. We're going to fall down to this planet, and boom! And so here we are. This is what the surface of Kerbal, uh, or Kerbin, that is, it looks like in Space Engine mod, known as Kerbal mod. But we do have clouds and we do have atmosphere, which does look kind of nice. 
Everything else though, not so nice. It, it, it does look a lot better from a distance, not as exciting when you actually come close to it. Uh, but nevertheless, it's a pretty awesome, pretty beautiful looking planet. Definitely Earth-like and definitely super exciting. Um, all right, so let's actually take a look at uh, the moon and also Minmus. And this is what the moon looks like. Uh, once again, relatively blurry if you come close to it, but super, super good looking from a distance. And you get all of the craters, all of the beauty, and all of the really nice visual effects that Space Engine produces uh, from a distance. But unfortunately, nothing procedurally generated when you come to the surface. And next is the dwarf moon Minmus. Now, Minmus has really beautiful mountains here. As a matter of fact, the texture looks actually really, really, really cool. I'm going to I'm going to slow down and maybe approach it a little bit closer just to see if I can maybe experience this from from um, from proximity. And this is actually what this looks like. Uh, this kind of a texture looks like on Minimus if you come close to it. So these are these dune like formations that seem to be procedurally generated. So this is um, one of the few objects that seems to have this procedural generation. And uh, the mountains here are really, really cool looking. So let's actually move away a little bit farther away from Minimus, just so you can see um, this beautiful object and all of its and all of its glory. Super, super cool looking moon. All right, so that's the dwarf moon of Minimus, and next on the list is Eve. And here comes the Eve, also known as a high titan of Eve. Um, from a distance, it looks super beautiful. Very, very purple very very scary looking and obviously has a lot more uh, surface pressure and uh, gravity than um, than Kerbin does but from proximity you won't really have any of these procedural generated effects here so you do have to kind of enjoy it from a distance um, the person who was making the model actually did mention that at some point there might be more atmospheric effects on Eve because right now it kind of looks very barren, but nevertheless, a very cool looking planet, very purple planet, probably the only purple planet you'll actually discover in Space Engine. And of course it has its little warm asteroid slash moon known as Gilly, which you can see right here. And it does seem to have this really strange formation, possibly a bug, possibly some kind of a collision effect from something else that I don't think exists in, um, in a, a Kerbal Space Program. But anyway, so this is Gilly, and lastly on the list we have the Mercury-like object known as Moho. So here it's known as a Hot Selena, and it's much, much smaller, much, much, um, I guess, less interesting than some of the other objects. But nevertheless, this is a, an object that is worth exploring in the Kerbal Space Program, and also, of course, in this mod as well, because it does look pretty cool. So this is Moho. And so that's it. That's essentially the Kerbal Space Program um, system, Kerbal system, recreated in Space Engine. I, I think it's actually pretty cool. It's definitely uh, worth having if you have Space Engine. And uh, since it's free, there's really no reason not to try it. Um, this is what it looks like. And if you actually enable orbits, you'll notice that for some unknown reason, Kerbin orbits in a very peculiar inclination compared to everything else. I don't really know why it's happening, but it's probably just a little bug. If you can fix it, or if you know how to fix it, uh, post this in the comments below, because I think Kerbin is supposed to be aligned with all of the other planes as well. Anyway, so that's Kerbal Space Program in Space Engine. Definitely worth trying, definitely worth exploring. And if you know any other cool science fiction or... Um, other unusual systems that have actually been recreated in Space Engine. Please let me know so I can take a look at them later as well. And anyway, so I think that's all I wanted to mention in this video. I just wanted to take a look at these various planets in um, Kerbin system, Kerbal system that is, and specifically give you an idea of what exists out there for Space Engine, an absolutely free-to-play simulation slash game that uh, has some of the coolest looking space environments in the world. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. And before we finish, let's actually go ahead and escape this and find our beautiful planet Earth, just so you know where, where this is actually located in relation to Earth and in our galaxy. So let's actually go ahead and possibly slow down and look at these four star formations. And these are, okay, so this is the fish formation, Aquarius, uh, Pisces. So we are pretty close to our home planet of Earth. Can we see something else that we're familiar with? So we can actually discover where Earth is. And right there we see Carina Nebula. If you look right here, you'll see the Lorem. 
and this beautiful star is Canopus. We are very, very close to home. This is actually our neighborhood because this right here is the Orion's Belt as well. This is the view we get to see from our planet Earth. And so let's actually just escape from here and look at the galaxy from top just so you can see where this star is in relation to our Earth because it's actually very, very close to Earth. So this right here is Kerbal and Kerbin and this right here is Earth. Super, super close. Essentially, these are our neighbors. Anyway, that's all I wanted to show you in this video. And let's actually go back to Earth and return to our home location. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe if you still haven't. Share this video with someone who you think might enjoy watching uh, Kerbal Space Program videos, which you can also find in the link below because I've made like almost a hundred of them previously. Thank you for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next video. Give me later. And as always, bye-bye. And welcome back home to Earth. Our beautiful, exciting planet. Very, very similar to Kerbin, of course. See you later. Bye-bye.